What's going on everybody, your boy Jay is back with another video and this video is a first of this channel. Uh, I'm gonna actually have my take on the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet presentation that just happened earlier this morning at the time of this recording. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down some things that was shown to us and give my thoughts and opinions on it. So if you guys wanna see more of this, definitely drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what your uh, opinions on the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet game. Are you going to get the game? Uh, what are you going to do with the game? Who are you going to start off as your starter? Things like that, you know. But uh, let's go ahead down to it. So, first thing that we uh, was shown to us, I'm just going to break it down in certain categories, just based on the website, because that's where you can get all the information. If you guys want to see the trailer or the presentation itself, I'll leave, I'll leave the link in the uh, description down below. But uh, let's start with the first news about the legendary Pokemon, Koridon and Maridon. Apparently, right at the start of the game, you can actually interact with these legendary Pokemon, which is unheard of in, in Pokemon, period. <laughs> like during your adventure, you'll meet a legendary Pokemon, either Koridon if you're playing Scarlet or Maridon if you're playing Violet, and it will join you on your journey. They are full of mystery and said to have power that far surpasses that of other Pokemon, which we did read about earlier. So apparently they have different forms that better suit you when on your journeys. They have different forms such as a drive mode where you can just pretty much travel through the Paldea region. That's the new region, by the way. Pretty much equivalent to that of you riding a bike. They, they have a drive mode so they can pretty much drive at full speed. Uh, the designs are pretty cool. I kind of like the uh, Maridon, uh, honestly, because it kind of looks like a actual motorcycle, <laughs> if anything. Uh, Koridon just looks kind of weird. And I only say that because uh, of how it's like made, like how its design is. Like it has the wheels on his on his body, but it's like the arms and stuff is kind of like it's 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 kind of distracting me a little bit. <laughs> it's distracting me just a little bit. I mean, it still doesn't look bad though, but. I think it could have done a lot better with that design. I think the Maridon is probably the better one. But um, they have other modes. They have the swimming build aquatic mode where you can actually jump into rivers, lakes, vibrant oceans to approach Pokemon that live there or cross perilous waters in a snap by riding one of these legendary Pokemon overseas, which is pretty cool. So that's basically the surf. They also have the glide mode we can jump from mountains, towering cliffs, or tall buildings and glide towards your destination. Not only does this offer you more options when choosing what to do, but you can also freely glide around and enjoy a view that you can see only from the Paladian skies. I thought this was pretty awesome. But yeah, um, I don't know how early you can get access to these Pokemon. I'm assuming once you enter the Academy, which we'll talk about later, uh, is, that when, is that when you'll actually get access to the uh, legendary Pokemon? Now this is unheard of because normally under circumstances legendary pokemon you don't normally interact with them until like later in the game like later in the story but this but it seems this time around you actually interact with them at the beginning of the story which is kind of strange so that's that's definitely something new that they've added into this pokemon uh series just interacting with them very er very very early in the game so that's pretty dope all right, so we have the oldest school in the Paldea region. Depending on which Pokemon game you play, determines of what the name, uh, I guess the name of the school is gonna be. So we have the Naranja Academy, which is in Scarlet, and the Uva Academy, which is in Violet. And so there you meet new Pokemon, meet new people, and it's in the largest city called Mesa Goza. So, don't know much about this town or this city rather but we do know that it's inspired by some uh some building that's in spain because the whole region is pretty much uh spain themed so uh it looks pretty good based on the uh the, the video the trailer that we saw i do like the town it's kind of it's kind of vibrant i still feel like it's there's still more things that they could add i don't know what it is exactly but it just seems like it's it still feels a little empty to me, but that that could just be me. <laughs> I don't know. 
but um the school is nice you know you meet uh special people in there uh you get to set out from school for a grand adventure special independent study project the treasure hunt so uh there you'll meet director clavel who will give you you and your friends an independent study assignment so we don't know much about that the treasure hunt obviously you're gonna you're gonna be going out throughout the whole paldia region to find treasure what that treasure is we don't know exactly what that is yet but uh, of course we'll probably know as the months go um you also meet people at the academy which is mentioned uh clavel who is the the director uh you meet jock who is the homeroom teacher who teaches biology and very knowledgeable about pokemon biology and he is the developer of the pokedex app for the rotom phone so that's going to be uh interesting we're going to be mostly talking to him about the pokedex and the pokemon research and all that jazz which is kind of strange because usually that's reserved for the pokemon professors but i guess the pokemon professors play a different role in this game we also meet your main character's friends one of them being arvin who is an upperclassman at the academy he's good at cooking researching healthy recipes that can help pokemon feel better he will be asking you to help him out since he isn't good at pokemon battles Okay, fair enough. And then you also meet Penny. Penny is in the same grade as you. She has a bit of a shy personality, and for some reason, she doesn't seem to come to the academy very often. She is especially fond of her fluffy Eevee bag, which is pretty cool, and always has it on her back. That's pretty cool. So we got two unique characters, pretty much your rivals. We can pretty much say this this uh, this region's or this generation's rivals that you're going to be into, uh, encountering uh but yeah this is not bad i like clavel also with the premier balls in his in his waist uh that tells us also he may have some special pokemon we may be able to battle him i'm assuming so we'll see kind of curious as to what pokemon he'll have but i'm i'm really curious as to what this treasure hunt is i don't know much about it i don't think we're gonna get that much information on it yet but we'll just have to wait and see what happens all right, another another new thing uh, that we've been introduced is the Pokemon Terrestrial Phenomenon, which I'm a little iffy on. Uh, so basically, the, 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 the Terrestrial Phenomenon <laughs> is a phenomenon found only in the Paldia region and makes Pokemon shine and glimmer like gems. When a Pokemon terrestrializes, a Terra Jewel appears above the Pokemon's head like a crown and the Pokemon's body glistens like a cut gemstone. It is said that the terrestrial energy that seeps from the ground of the Paldea region is involved in the phenomenon. Many details remain unclear, but Professor Sada and Professor Toro are researching the mystery. Now, I, for one, eh, I'm a little indifferent about these designs here. Like, this, this Eevee with the crystal on his head. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool, but design-wise, for most of these other Pokemon, kind of like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know I don't know why I'm not like completely gravitated towards these designs but it's like why 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 is why are they crystallized <laughs> I mean some of them kind of look all right but then there's just some that just looks kind of lame like the the drift the drift loon <laughs> the drift loon looked it looked kind of weird I mean being in a balloon Pokemon having another balloon on your head it's like why <laughs> i don't know why but um apparently these terrorized whatever you want to call this terrestrialized pokemon uh they hold the key to victory or defeating battles so basically how they uh terrestrialize is you need an item called the terra orb and with the terra orb you can actually use that to terrestrialize your pokemon and that pokemon will gain a special power now each Pokemon in that region has a Terra type, and the, ter and the Terra type isn't active until the Pokemon actually terrestrialize at that time, which the Pokemon's type will change to the Terra type of its own. So, for example, some Eevees will have a normal Terra type, but some others may have flying Terra types. So, it really all depends on. It really just depends on the Pokemon that you have. So, obviously, there are 18 types, which is uh, the other types like fire water and grass which you all should know the types already by now so there's like they said eevee can have a normal terror type or a flying terror type there's some eevees that could have 
a water terror type. It just really all depends. Now, this terror stylizing Pokemon allows you to enhance battle strategies by increasing the power of any moves that have the same type as your Pokemon's terror type or by changing your Pokemon's weakness. Now, to activate this special transformation, you would obviously need the Terra Orb, like we said, in order for you to, you know, to transform them. And that basically gives you an upper hand in battle. Uh, apparently, you can also uh, use a move that matches his Terra type and have a move that that's also the same type as that Pokemon. And I believe that's a double stab, if I read this correctly. So if I had an Eevee that that was, uh, let's, let's say we had that, that Lilligant that they show here on the screen. Uh, if they had the Lilligant was a grass and fairy type. If the terrestrialized Pokemon uses a move that matches his terror type. So if Lilligant's terror type was grass and we already had the Lilligant that's grass already and you use one of its original types, one of its moves that has, that was its original type being grass. The, move, the boost to that move's power is doubled or possibly tripled if I'm reading this right. So that possibly could be broken. <laughs> I don't know how like how that still like would work in Pokemon battles. I know in competitive battles it could be something. But this is just a new gimmick that they added for this new generation. And I'm not sure how that's going to play in this new game, but... We'll see. We'll see what happens. And of course, uh, as mentioned, the Terra Orb. You need to use that to terrestrialize a Pokemon, but you can only use it once per battle. And once you use it, then you will have to recharge it. And you can either recharge it by finding crystals scattered around the region, or you can just go to a Pokemon Center and get it recharged from there. So you can't constantly use it every single time. You got to recharge it every single battle which is uh okay i guess so i'm pretty sure they have like a whole bunch of uh kiosk areas that we saw in the trailer that you can just instantly go there and get a recharge from there so it shouldn't be that big of an issue to uh do that just gotta remember to charge it before you head into any battle and then you should be okay but uh, my thoughts and opinions on that i'm not sure how good that's going to be like i said the designs could have been a lot better. I don't think they really needed to uh, have like these crystal things floating over their heads and shit. I think if you just made the Pokemon like crystallized versions of themselves, I think in my opinion, it would have been better off, but that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> you know, another thing, another thing that we could probably check out is the way that we look as far as customization goes. So apparently we start off wearing the school's uniform and that's pretty much based on what game you're playing. Obviously, if you're playing Scarlet, you'll be wearing some orange school uniform. And if you're playing Violet, then Violet will give you school clothing based on that color as well. So it's saying that in this game, you can arrange your looks and hairstyle to freely change your appearance. You can make changes to your character's eye shape, mouth shape, and more to look the way that you want it to look. And of course, you can change your hairstyle, hair color, and eyebrows at salons. Uh, as far as customization goes, ranging from short sleeves and shorts to warm blazers, the Academy has four different kinds of uniforms in total. Additionally, you can collect a wide variety of, of accessories from boutiques, wear your favorite items, and try out different styles along the way on your adventure. I don't know how in-depth that's going to be as far as like buying clothing and stuff like that. They're saying you have four different kinds of uniforms. So I'm assuming like it's just going to be nothing but uniforms you can wear, but you can have like, but they may have like different variations of those. Like you can't just buy regular clothing <laughs> from, from, from boutique stores and stuff like that, which is kind of a letdown a little bit, but I could be wrong. It could, it, it could be, it, it could, they could have some cool clothing for you guys to wear. I just don't like, I just hate the mere fact that I have to actually wear clothing like like uniforms meaning <laughs> like why can i not wear anything i want to wear why do i have to wear why am i tethered to wearing a school uniform <laughs> if i'm going to a gym battle i don't think i need to be wearing a school uniform <laughs> for a gym battle that's not what i want to be. that's not what i want to do that's not how i like to present myself when i'm going into gym battles i don't want to present myself 
as the champion of the Paldia region wearing a school uniform. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just don't see the appeal in that at all. I don't. But we'll see. We'll see more of the customization, I'm sure, soon. But hopefully they're hopefully hopefully uh they're they're really good and not too lame. Alright, so as far as the story goes, the, apparently the game has three stories that you can actually do in any order that you want. So the story unfolds the way that you want it to. So you can weave three grand stories into your adventure as you meet Pokemon you've never seen and unique characters. These titles have the hallmark Pokemon story of going to gyms and aiming to become a champion, but there's no set path. You can go to whichever gym you want to challenge in the order you desire, which is freaking amazing. I actually do like this method, which is definitely a first in the Pokemon series as well. There's no level scaling or anything like that, I'm pretty sure. Well, it might be to some degree, just to make sure that, uh, Things are played out uh, fair. So I'm looking forward to that actually. I don't know which gym I'm gonna go to first. Like you can literally travel anywhere in the region. Like it doesn't matter which gym you go to first, you can go in any order that you want. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for that. Uh, furthermore, there are two other grand stories besides your pursuit of becoming a champion and many trials and tribulations await you in those stories as well. Please look forward to finding out what kinds of stories they are. Yeah, we're not going to find out what those other two stories are until like later down the line before the game is released. We should have another trailer that'll probably explain to us what those other two stories are. So I'm very curious. I was saying in my uh, stream earlier that this could be the longest stream, longest stream. This could be the longest Pokemon game that we've actually played, like the longest. And I'm actually uh, looking forward to that. I'm very, very, very curious. I think I think this is probably going to be like really great. It's going to be something for sure. So let's see. We can aim for the Pokemon champion rank, which is pretty simple. You go through eight gyms. And then once you beat all eight gym leaders, you're going to be taking a special test called the champion assessment. And if you pass the assessment, your strength will be acknowledged. And then you'll be given the champion rank, making you an object of admiration for other trainers. I believe you can also uh, go through Victory Road. I don't know how that is incorporated in this game, but um, I'm pretty sure you do fight the Elite Four in some capacity too. Maybe this is part of the champion assessment. We're not too sure what that is or what it details, but like I said, we'll probably know more about that as the months go. We've got about three months left until the game is actually released so we'll probably get more information on that somewhere down the line and then we also get the new gym leader of the glacido town or glacido city and at first i thought this train this uh, gym leader was a female but it's <laughs> it's actually a male and his name is grusha who used to be a professional snowboarder but now he's the gym leader of the glacido gym full-time he is a specialist of ice types, which he uses the, the new Pokemon, Titan, which we'll uh, get down to in a bit. And uh, yeah, I think the, I think this uh, Grusha person uh, looks pretty cool. Like based on his designs, we like immediately. I'm pretty sure everybody thought this this person was a female. <laughs> and then, then but now when we look at the uh, description of this person, we realize that he's actually a male. So it's like, bro. <laughs> I don't know. People may still be simping for this guy. I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, he looks cool. He looks cool. No pun intended. But that said, Titan looks pretty. It looks pretty cool too. But I don't know. There's something about that Pokemon. It's just like design-wise, looks kind of strange. But maybe overall, it could be like a very good Pokemon. But we'll we'll just have to wait and see. We do know more about the Pokemon, actually. We can actually look through that because they introduced us with some new Pokemon and one Pokemon uh, regional variant. So that's a pretty cool one. Uh, we can look at Satitan actually real quick since we were talking about him just now. So this Satitan is a Terra Whale Pokemon who has the ability Thick Fat and Slush Rush, which is a pretty cool ability to have. Uh, for this Pokemon, Thick Fat, I think, is definitely going to benefit more out of uh, this, maybe, than Slush Rush. It's just me. I don't know. 
Uh, so it has strong muscles and thick blubber. So Titan need to have tough muscles to be able to support their immense bodies and physical attacks using their bodies have incredible power. They also migrate around the snowy regions protected by a thick layer of subcutaneous fat. The Titan has five hard horns. Among them, the horn of the upper jaw is able to gather ice energy, making the surrounding temperature extremely low and freezing the area around the Pokemon. Now this Pokemon could definitely be like a tanky one, just just based off its looks. Uh, stat wise, could be pretty good too. But then again, it's an ice type Pokemon, and I know most ice types don't have very good stats, from what I recall. But maybe this one may have some good ones. I just had that feeling. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but this may be a Pokemon I may want to rock with uh, in my journey. So we'll just see. We'll just see more about it. We'll see more about it. Another new Pokemon that was introduced to us was Fido, which is the puppy Pokemon, and it's a fairy type with the ability Own Tempo, which I believe it 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 is immune to being confused. If I'm not mistaken. So let's see what this is about. So Fido's moist, smooth skin has elastic qualities and is both firm and soft at the same time. When these Pokemon become excited, they intimidate their opponents by puffing up their bodies to appear bigger. Fido ferments things in its vicinity using the yeast in its breath. Said yeast is useful for cooking, so this Pokemon has been protected by people since long ago. I mean, it looks pretty cute, right? I mean... I don't know if this is like this base this base uh form i don't know if it has like an evolution i i think it may have it since it is a puppy pokemon i think it may have like a second or possibly or possibly a third evolution this puppy pokemon uh this puppy pokemon is uh pretty adorable i guess you know uh not much to really say about it but we'll see uh what move sets it has and if it's pretty good then uh We'll probably rock with this one. We have another new Pokemon from a, from this region. We have the Paldean Wooper. This one, obviously, if you can tell, just by just by the shape of its head, looks like the poison symbol. And so this is a poison fish, which is a poison and ground type, with the ability poison point and water absorb, which is definitely a very good ability to have for this Wooper. I'm going to safely assume that the uh, Paldean Wagsire will also have the same ability and also have the same type so the fact that it's poison and ground is interesting i'm pretty sure it can still get hit with ground type moves it'll still be super effective um but i'm really really curious as to what move sets it will have hopefully it'll have something like something outstanding like like a like an op poison type move or something not really sure but Anyways, uh, in ancient times, Wooper lived underwater in the Paldea region, but it seems after losing in the struggle for territory, they began living in bogs on the land. To keep from drying out while living on the land, they began to cover their bodies with a poisonous film. These Wooper's gills have hardened thanks to living on the land for so long. Their bodies are heavy and they move slowly, but they can protect themselves by shooting powerful poisonous liquid from their gills. You may see poisoned Pokemon in areas where these Wooper live. So that's an interesting uh, little story there. It seems like most of these regional forms are because of of uh, their way, their like their way of living, right? Like Pokemon that are not normally seen in regions based on the climate, they end up changing their forms, of changing their appearances, and then they end up changing to a uh, set type based on the uh, based on the climate. So that's that's pretty interesting. That is pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more regional variants. I did see in like some leaks that there are regional variants, which I was assuming we was going to see one anyways in this uh, this presentation, and I was right. So um, I don't know what other regional variants they may have, but so far this isn't bad. I didn't I didn't expect a Whooper though out of all Pokemon to have a regional variant, but you know Whoopers got to get some love too, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I don't know if we got any other news, but we actually do, do get to see the uh, Paldea region, which is pretty cool. So we can actually see the region in its entirety, which kind of reminds me of uh, 
it, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, the Unova region, almost. Actually, no. Yeah, it actually it actually does remind me of the Unova region. And this is like pretty. This is a pretty uh, circular region too. Like obviously, there might be more things to show off here, like this particular area right here that's covered in clouds. There's probably something like maybe in a DLC that may be unlocked or something. Who knows? Well, we, we, we're going to we're going to definitely have DLC. What that DLC is, we, we're not sure. There's also something here in the middle, which I'm not sure what that is. But um, we'll probably know more about it as uh, the months go by. But um, yeah, this is this is not bad. Honestly, this isn't bad at all. I don't know how, like I said, I don't know how big this region actually is. Like, I, I, I have no idea, but um, hopefully there's not like a short distance from getting from one town to the next. Because that's, that's the kind of thing that I kind of hate <laughs> more than anything. So they kind of did that with Sword and Shield. I mean, it was pretty, it wasn't that, it wasn't too short getting from one place to another, but it was still like, some places it literally took you like a couple of seconds just to get from one town to the next which kind of annoyed me a little bit so i'm hoping with this new region like you actually have to take time to get to one place so yeah the region is not bad so far but yeah it's called the paldia region and i'm not sure what that means in spanish i'm pretty sure it's it means something <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not about. To, I'm not about to do any research with that shit. Um, but yeah, one more thing we can actually uh, take a look at is the max raid battles. And obviously, team is not max raid battles. Is is the Terra raid battles? Well, they're pretty much max raid battles. That was from Gen Eight, Sword and Shield. If you guys remember that, fighting Gigantamax Pokemon with uh, up to four players. So the same thing applies in this game, and. This one is a little bit different because instead of fighting Gigantamax Pokemon, you're actually fighting uh, the terrestrialized Pokemon. Uh, I don't know like how special they are. They may have hidden abilities. Maybe they have different typings for the Terra types. Uh, could be those things. But honestly, it's just something to have for multiplayer. And it makes sense too, because you're playing with multiplayer, you might as well do something with friends other than just battling with them and trading so this is a pretty cool concept i don't think i'm going to be doing this as much unless you can get shiny pokemon out of it which i'm pretty sure you can uh i don't know how, how i don't know how the odds are in that in that respect so we'll just have to see so this battle system has a time limit and allows you to continue attacking seamlessly without having to wait for other trainers to choose their actions that's a good thing I hate waiting for people to make a move. <laughs> Take on these battles by coordinating with your teammates and by increasing the stats of the Pokemon on your side or healing them. Of course, you need a Nintendo Switch Online in order for you to do this stuff. We already knew that. Uh, let's see here. What else would we know about this? Okay, Terry battles may have a Terra type that differs from their usual type or types. I already know that. Expand options in co-op by playing or cheering. There's three kind of cheers you can use and they will benefit all the ally Pokemon on your side. The three effects are boosting attack, special attack, boosting defense, special defense, and healing. Anybody can use these cheers, allowing you to play cooperatively even if your Pokemon hasn't learned any moves to support other Pokemon. Cooperation is the key to terror raid battles. Lead your side to victory by cheering. So they've actually made this a little bit better so it seems so now we can actually fully strategize on how to you know defeat the terra the terror raid uh pokemon so that's actually a pretty good uh concept there it's not bad okay catch the defeated terra pokemon so managing to defeat it within a time limit will undo the pokemon's transformation giving you the chance to try to catch it by throwing pokeballs victories can reward you with many useful items too like how it was in Gen 8, where you can get like these uh, shards, I believe they were called. And you can use those to buy rare candies and TMs and things like that. 
So I'm sure they're going to be doing the same thing uh, with this one. I don't know if they're going to bring back the experience candies. I think they might. I think they might. I think they might do it. That would be pretty cool if they did. So pretty much the whole concept of entering raid battles is the same as Gen, uh, Gen 8. And it shouldn't be that hard to really do all of that. But depending on how this is uh, handled, like as far as like what the rewards are when you do max raid battles or terror raid battles, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it brings out good rewards, then I may, then I may consider uh, trying it out. I may consider trying it with, uh, with friends. But it looks pretty good so far. Overall, I did like the presentation that they showed us. You know, just showing a new Pokemon, new crystallized forms, riding with a legendary Pokemon, attending the oldest school in the Paldea region, knowing what the region looks like, doing stories in any way that you want, playing the game any way you want, however you want. You literally have the freedom to do anything you want to in the game. You can literally not do any gym battles and just constantly catch Pokemon and then do it at your own leisure. You can pretty much do anything you want. Anything you want. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. But like I said uh, earlier, uh, as far as the region goes, like I've seen the visuals, I've seen the locations and stuff. Some locations I think could be a little bit more. I think I think they need to add a little bit more stuff in there. What those things are, I'm not sure. Cause it just looked like from from looking at it, like there was some things that seemed like they were missing. But like I said, it's this is still an early build, I'm sure. So I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna add more things in. So we got about three months left. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But um yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna show off today. I think that's all they uh had showed us, unless I missed something. Uh and I don't think I have, but let me know what your thoughts are uh, as far as this uh, presentation goes. What did you like most about it? Again, what is your starter Pokemon? Who you want to start off with? What are you most looking forward to uh, in this game? How are you going to start your game off? Are you going to go to the gyms? Are you going to go do the other two stories that's not revealed to us yet? Like, how do you want to actually start off this game? Uh, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts and opinions about this. But um, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, give it that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel because I'll be covering more Pokemon news, not necessarily leaks because I don't do that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. So um, anyways, check out my links in the description below. You can follow me on Twitch because that's where I do all my live streams and I will be streaming this game also on twitch.tv slash saveusj. So definitely subscribe there. And um, that's all I got to say. So with that said, guys, have a good one. My name is Jay, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.